Welcome to Reflections, a program sponsored by Paducah Cooperative Ministry, where they do God's work with human hands. Today I'm excited to be here. My name is Jay Gottman. I'm the lead minister at First Christian Church here in Paducah. And our guest today is Heidi Sir Heinrich, who is the executive director of Paducah Cooperative Ministry. And I want to welcome her today. Welcome. Hey, Jay. It's, it's good to be here with you. Thank you. So glad you're here today. One of the things that uh, I'm always amazed at in our community is that sometimes uh, programs and ministries have been around for quite a while and yet we have new people moving into Paducah all the time and people who just maybe aren't as aware as they would like to be and so I want to ask just some basic questions for you to share with sure. those who are watching today. Yes. Uh, what's the basic mission of Paducah Cooperative Ministry and the main focus uh, of what you do and offer here in the community? Okay, that's a good place to start. Um, our mission is that we seek to do God's work with human hands and we do this by bringing together individuals and resources and to respond to basic human needs in our community. So it's a very local ministry. And so what are some of the biggest needs that you see on a, on a daily basis when it comes to uh, those in our community who need a little extra help? Right. Um, well, PCM was started back in 1973 by several churches in the area that were all trying to feed the hungry and to keep some canned goods on hand and to respond to that particular uh, human need. And uh, we got our start by those congregations coming together and saying, well, wouldn't it make more sense if we pooled our resources and we did something in a cooperative way? And uh, so feeding the hungry is one of the things that we've done for over 40 years. And probably the this, this service that we're best known for. And in the purchase area, probably uh, the largest food pantry in terms of distribution. So we... Um, help folks with emergency groceries. We can help over 400 households in a month's time. It's quite a bit of food and it comes from a lot of different places. And uh, folks know that they can, if, if they live in McCracken County and have an urgent need, they can come and see us up to five times in a year's time. That's amazing. And I know today you brought some examples of some of the food that gets right. dropped off or right. donated. Right. Uh, what what are some current needs that you have for the food pantry? Well, you know, we always like to have a well-balanced uh, uh, food pantry so that we, we're not just giving away green beans and corn, you know, mm -hmm. that we know that people are getting some protein items like peanut butter is always a big need, um, cereal is always a big need, and uh, tuna fish. And so um, we have some basic core items that we want to make sure we always have so that when somebody gets some emergency groceries from us, we know that they can make meals out of it. So tuna and tuna helper is great. Spaghetti and spaghetti sauce is great. Uh, macaroni and cheese. Who doesn't like macaroni and cheese, right. you know? So um, what I brought today is chili, things like that. We want protein items. We want to make sure we can cover breakfast through dinner and uh, give some folks uh, options. Um, not everybody's a good cook and not everybody has a lot of pots and pans and, and tools with which to cook. So we keep that in mind too. It needs to be easy to fix um, and something that most people like. So if someone is struggling with food, sometimes that means they probably also struggle with some of the other basic needs like utilities right, and right. Keeping, keeping the lights on and the water running, those types of things. How, how do you respond to those kind of needs? Right, we do respond to those kinds of needs as well as helping with food. You know, um, there's a lot of folks that are kind of living on the edge and, and particularly after Christmas and other times of the year, hours get cut at jobs or people get sick and can't work for a couple of days and that can be enough to get somebody behind with the utility company or with the landlord and so we have a program uh, an emergency assistance fund that can help you know somebody come in might come in with a utility disconnection notice and they've got four days to come up with enough money to keep the power on and, and their 
they're in a little bit of a desperate situation, and so that's something that we can look at and see if we can help um, keep the water on, keep the, the heat on, keep the lights on. Um, that's pretty important as well. Sure, and I know you mentioned uh, around Christmas and people getting behind sometimes. Yeah. I know uh, besides the member organizations there are over 40 plus, mm -hmm. it's an interfaith uh, organization that, that supports Paducah to cooperative right. ministry and individuals support it, but we as a community here in Paducah, especially through the program Christmas at the Park, mm -hmm. uh, I think this year was a banner year for proceeds. Can yes. you explain a little bit how that works? Well, you are absolutely right. We have such a supportive community, and, and PCM was established by congregations, interfaith that come together and, and, and lift up and support this mission, but it is cooperative in many other ways, and uh, one of the neat things that happens every year in December is the Christmas lights in the park at Noble Park, and there's about four of us, four different agencies that benefit from that. And so it's an amazing light display and then you take your friends and family through and um, they have the opportunity to drop off some canned goods uh, or a couple dollars, you know. Mm -hmm. And when all of that's said and done after Christmas, after the new year, it's, it's divvied up between Family Service Society and St. Vincent de Paul and PCM and um, Salvation Army. And we received 20 uh, great big giant bins full of canned goods down at PCM. That was such an exciting day. We had a forklift <laughs> operator and he was setting them down the parking lot and, and the guys from Keaton Corrections that help us out every day, they were pallet jacking them into the building and, and, um, and then that opens up whole new opportunities for members mm -hmm. of the community to come in because that's a lot of canned goods to sort. <laughs> sure. So we've got to look at expiration dates and we've got to get all the green beans together and the corn and. We have a great time with that. And you have volunteers come from all different yes, segments of society. Yes. I know you have youth groups come, yes. church groups, uh, all those types of uh, entities come in and help sort all that food. Right, it's such a great opportunity to get people in the building. And you're right, we had have, we have first graders all the way up to grandmas and grandpas. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it felt like the entire congregation of one church came and they knocked out six bins in about an hour and a half, you know. And then we had uh, nursing students came one day and uh, students from St. Mary High School. I mean, just all different walks of life came in and started sorting canned goods. And here's the really fun thing that I like, it's addictive. <laughs> And uh, it, it's kind of soothing and it's fun and it's hard to stop once you get started. <laughs> and so um, there have been a couple times I've said, no, you can't do any more bins because that bin, I'm saving that bin for another group that's coming in later this week. And they, really? And I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> but isn't that a great problem to have? It, it gets people in the building. They have an understanding of what the food pantry is like and what we need and, and how we do it and they have a good time and, and do some community service at the same time. Yes, it, it's, it's wonderful to come down and volunteer. I know our children have done that in mm -hmm. the past and, and they get into it and they mm -hmm. really enjoy it. And while they're participating, they're also learning right. about the community and what PCM does yeah. and how every little bit helps. Well, when we get the children into the building, Jay, or the youth groups that come in, um, it gives them the opportunity to understand when they hear PCM or we're collecting canned goods for PCM. Now they have a visual that goes with it and uh, it starts to make sense. And I always feel like the most important thing we can do is, is teach our children young um, about caring for our neighbor as we would hope that, you know, our neighbor would care for us in the same circumstances. So it's a great opportunity to bring kids in and, and get them started along that path of, of being thoughtful of others. Exactly, and volunteers comprise a big portion of, of who you are as a ministry because you and your staff work so hard day in and day out, but you can't do everything. And so uh, are there volunteer uh, opportunities out there that, that you need on a regular basis? Well, you're right. Uh, having volunteers and other folks that help us extends our reach much further than the staff could do on our own. Um, so we have volunteers. We've got some folks that have been with us eight or ten years that mm. um, answer phones and, and welcome people in. We've got volunteers that pick up uh, regular routes every week at Panera Bread or Pizza Hut and, and uh, bring those donations back to us. Um, we've had a long partnership with Keaton Corrections, the halfway house. And every day we've got a couple of gentlemen that come out and do community service with us. And they're really the muscles behind the ministry. You know, they do the heavy lifting for us. Um, 
So we and the AmeriCorps program is another great resource. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's, no. Uh, AmeriCorps is kind of like Peace Corps, only it's a national service organization, and uh, a person can get into the AmeriCorps program and find a site that they would like to serve. It's a 12-month commitment. It's about 1,700 hours, mm. and uh, they get a little bit of a living stipend, not very much, but they get great experience. Mm. And at the end of the 1,700 hours, they get an educational award of five or six thousand dollars, you know, to help towards uh, student loans and or uh, you know going on in school. And and so we've got two AmeriCorps service members working with us this year. And again, that just helps you do more and reach further. Very good. Very good. I'd like to switch tact here just for a moment and sure. we've talked about food and utilities I think mm -hmm. that's primarily uh, what PCM is most known for uh, but you do so much more than that what are some other programs that are going on right now that maybe uh, those watching aren't as familiar with and give you energy and expand the ministry of all PCM? Right, all right. Um, well, of course, homelessness is a big thing, but we've talked a lot about that here lately. We, we've built uh, the first phase of the Fresh Start Village, and we have women and children uh, on site right now, and, and that's a pretty comprehensive program in terms of helping people rebuild their lives and, and providing the educational components. And I, um, I know we've talked about that a lot, so we'll, we'll focus on some other things maybe that people don't know that we do. Um, in addition to emergency food, there are actually two other food uh, programs that we provide and, and one is a federal program that we administer. We have 400 low-income seniors that mm -hmm. once a month come and get two bags of groceries. It's commodity groceries and it's, mm -hmm. it's meant to supplement their nutritional needs and um, we've had a, a, all they have to do is live in McCracken County and meet the income guidelines and, and be over the age of 60 and once they're on this program every month we see them and, and we get to know them pretty well and we can see what a difference it, it does make. We, we uh, journey along with them. Now when you say commodities, what, what would that include? Uh, is it the same thing every month or does that change? It is kind of the same thing every month but the flavors change. Okay. You know? So you're always <laughs> going to get juice and cereal and vegetables and fruit and mm -hmm. peanut butter. Um, but the type of juice or the type of cereal or the type of vegetable will change up a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's usually um, some milk in that as well. And it's just some really basic items that would help. It wouldn't be something that somebody could live on all month. Mm -hmm. Although sometimes, you know, the cereal could last a little while. But um, it, it's, it's just a supplement. And then what everybody's favorite on that program is, is the block of cheese that comes with really? that. It's a <laughs> block of cheese about this size. And... Um, they, you know, that's definitely the favorite. <laughs> and then what about those uh, seniors in our community who, who can't get out as easily? Uh, I, I think Meals on Wheels is a program that's yes, also administered. Yes, that's one that we don't talk about very often. Uh, it's an emergency Meals on Wheels program, not to be confused with the federal program. And it's just a stopgap. It's just a, a short-term measure to help folks that are coming out of the hospital and maybe don't have any resources, no family close, and there's some concern by the social service staff at the hospital or, or the caring uh, facility that this person may not have the means to continue um, their convalescence without some help. And so what we do is we basically fund emergency meals on wheels for a period of up to six weeks. And uh, we're put on the list over at the senior center and they're the ones that provide uh, the meal. They do all the cooking and, and all of that and the delivery um, and the referrals come from the area hospitals. Okay. And so it's a really neat collaborative project that's been around for 20 years or so, uh, but okay. we just don't talk about it very much. But it, for those individuals, that really means a lot. And, and last year, I think we provided over 450 meals um, for just a, a handful of people that were at risk. It's just a quiet little program. It's amazing. And all those referrals have to come from a care provider of some, right, some sort. Right, right. They, they are the ones that know the situation better than anybody and, and can say, hey, this person just needs a little extra help. Can you provide some meals for a couple weeks? Okay. And, uh, and then that gives them time to get on the federal program or to uh, recover sufficiently to care for themselves. Okay, that's wonderful. Yeah. And I know you mentioned that there was this collaboration that has recently started with the uh, Quilt Museum yes, here in Paducah. Yes, yes. You know, we talked about our mission uh, a couple minutes ago, um, bringing together individuals and resources. 
to respond to basic human needs, but we also like the first part of that, bringing together individuals and resources just in general, and I think PCM does a good job of that. And we were invited to uh, participate in a new initiative by the Quilt Museum um, to make the Quilt Museum more accessible to some of the members in our own community that might not otherwise access the museum. So they came to us and asked about some of the folks that we work with, and, and, and so we've dreamed up a really neat project, I think. And uh, what it, it will start in the summertime, and we will have um, three or four workshops for individuals, two-hour workshops. They come in to the Quilt Museum, no, no cost, and during that two hour time, whether they've ever sewn a stitch before in their lives or, or they're a great seamstress, to create a special project during that uh, two hour workshop with the help of the, the knowledgeable staff at the Quilt Museum who provides mm -hmm. the tools and the fabric and the ideas, you know. So at the end, they might go home with a, a pillow or a tote bag or a couple pot holders and, and they swear that, you know, even if you've never <laughs> stitched on a button, they can have you, you could be a, a sewer by the time the uh, workshop is over and go home with something to show off, you know, to other people. And oh, so wonderful. we have aimed this at our low-income seniors that are part of the uh, senior commodity program and uh, it's a great way to get them out to using their imagination to to uh, expanding their your mental acuity and 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 sure. social there's a social aspect right to that. yeah if you don't have a whole lot of social interaction this is a way to get you out and yeah. interacting with people that right. you've not met before Right. And, and learn something fun, hopefully. Exactly, and then the who knows where that could go? You know, they might uh, really decide that they love doing that and then that could turn out to be a new hobby that, that just really um, enhances their lives in creative ways. And I always think creative projects are, are so healing and um, so healthy. Sure, and so for this uh, particular program, uh, what's the age? that one can participate, and then how do they learn more about that? Do they contact you or the Quilt yes, Museum? Yes, they can, they can contact us or the Quilt Museum, but PCM will be the, the main uh, source of referrals. And we're gonna start mm -hmm. this first round with folks that are age 60 and older, but okay. it, there's, there's potential. Who knows where this will go? I'm just excited about the collaborative aspect and the creative aspect, and it's it's not about crises and emergencies, and that allows right. us to be a little something more also. Yeah, it's more creative outlet mm -hmm. for those folks. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, what other things are taking place that maybe are a little less well known? I don't know if, if many folks know that we are in the McCracken County Jail on a weekly basis mm -hmm. with a program that we've been presenting down there for about five years now called Breaking Barriers. And it's actually a curriculum that was developed uh, for use in correctional facilities, mm -hmm. and it, it deals with the effects and the, the tools needed to create change in your life. And uh, one of the very first things we go in and talk about is that sometimes people don't believe change is possible. Mm -hmm. and, and so we address that right off the bat, change is possible. So you provide hope yes. from the get-go. But change is hard, you know, and, sure. and you've got to know how to do it, and it doesn't mm -hmm. happen overnight. And so it's a 17-week series and uh, we have trained facilitators, mm -hmm. volunteers again that have been with us for a long time and uh, we work with a, a small group of women for 17 weeks and go through that curriculum um, and then we start over and we just mm -hmm. are always doing the Breaking Barriers curriculum in the jail and it's been very well received and uh, we would like to just continue that outside the jail as well um, just to, we know that sometimes when people hit the sidewalk after coming out of out of jail or prison, um, all the good intentions just evaporate and, and fear sets in, sure. you know, and, and panic. And so we want to be able to be a resource inside as well as outside the walls. Sure. And when many of these women complete this process, as you mentioned, uh, once once they are back out in society and the community, they may not have any resources mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And I know PCM in the past has, has helped right. to uh, give some transition. That's right. We say, come and see us. 
we'll jump up and down and, and be excited that you <laughs> know right. celebrate with you but then we want to make sure you have what you need do you have a safe place to stay mm -hmm. do you need help getting replacement identification you know what do you need how can we help you through we know that the first 24 hours are very significant and as mm. to whether a person succeeds really? or fails in the reentry into the community so um, we always talk to them about having a plan and knowing what you're going to do the first 24 hours and the first week and and come and see us because we want to be a part of that if we can. Sure, sure. Uh, what else goes along with that program? Do you provide any housing uh, if, if they need if they need such a thing? If they need housing and we've got space, we want to be able to provide that because that's mm -hmm. important to us. I think that's one of the reasons why people um, relapse and then why recidivism is so high is because if you don't have safe resources on the outside, you go back to what else is available to you. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in the past, we've had the Fresh Start House and when we lost the housing units over at the housing authority, everything kind of turned upside down for a mm -hmm. little bit. But uh, now that we do have shelter for single women, we're going to be incorporating that back into what we do. Mm -hmm. That's so. amazing. And, you know, all these things don't just happen. It takes resources. It takes time. It takes energy. And I know you, you get donations from church groups and uh, the mosque and, and the synagogue and individuals and, and corporations and federal grants and all these types of things. But I also know you do some creative fundraising as well. There's the Fund Run, yeah. uh, the Moonlight Bike Ride. How, right, how do all right. those work into the ministry? Um, it's a lot like a patchwork quilt. I say that all the time. You know, it's, it's like a quilt. All these pieces come together and, and somehow it, it works and it mm -hmm. works in a beautiful way. But um, we are entering into our third year of the moon, Moonlight Ride, which mm -hmm. we are so excited about. It's, it's so much fun. And uh, last summer we had over 500 bike riders of all ages. I think there was somebody that was over the age of 80 and there were little ones, that, you know, in the carriers <laughs> behind their parents. And uh, it takes place on a Saturday night under the light of a full moon. Mm -hmm. um, there's live music just before you get started and everybody decorates their bikes with glow sticks and, and twinkly lights and, and <laughs> it's really something to see and it's, it's really, I'm not a, um, an avid bike rider so it, what's a year is about what I do okay. but I could do it, <laughs> you know, and so it's kind of a gentle bike ride through Paducah, 10 miles and I remember my experience last year was going down Jefferson Street and you'd see people coming out on their porches to watch all of these bikes go by in the beautiful colors, but it was so silent. You could hear the crickets and you could hear the swishing of the, of the tires, but it was just such a silent, ethereal kind of experience. It was great. And I can't imagine what it looked like on the porch oh, of somebody's house watching that go by. So um, I would encourage anybody who thinks that sounds like fun to get in touch with us and we'll get more information. Uh, it's. It's just a really great time for all ages. Yeah, it's like a little PCM parade going through town. <laughs> People go, what is this? And, yeah. you know, anything to raise awareness right. helps, helps. And have a good time at the same time. Yeah, that's the definitely. best way to do things is have a good time um, while you're doing something that's uh, beneficial to somebody else. Exactly. And I think that's what I love about uh, PCM and the ministry and the people that it pulls in is it is so intergenerational. Yes. You mentioned the youngest and, you know, uh, a uh, trailer behind a bicycle and then someone who is who is older participating right. and, and you get this connectivity right. that sometimes we don't always find because we're in our own little And that bubbles. makes us stronger, doesn't it? It does, definitely. It allows us to learn the stories of other people in our community mm -hmm. and and you hear stories all the time in your work and all your employees do and all the staff and and so uh, I think one of the things I appreciate about PCM and the newsletter that we get and the annual meeting, uh, there are always stories, and stories are powerful. Mm -hmm. And and you you as well as everyone on staff do a good job of telling those stories. Thank you. Because it it helps me want to give when I know that I've helped someone who has a name. Right. You feel like you know that person, or you feel like I could be in that situation, or I almost was in that situation. You know, those stories are important and. Um, they need to be heard because that validates the person and, and gives them back their their worth that I'm an important person and this has happened to me and somebody cares about that and wants to help and then we hope that that's a contagious thing that 
um, makes our whole society a little bit stronger and that we're always aware that um, even though Jay looks like he's smiling and happy today, <laughs> I don't know what happens, you know, what kind of struggles he has that's that right. he doesn't tell me about. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things <clears throat> I'm always telling the kids. You just never know um, what so-and-so is going home to and, and what kind of struggles that that person in your classroom has at home and then they could be somebody that needs help so we just want to always be kind to to everybody because we don't know we don't know and, and we do know it could be us next time exactly exactly we just we just don't know what other people are facing and and the difficulties that sometimes come out of the blue and and so it's important to to know that and to be aware yeah. of that uh, what about the the fund run I know that that's been going on for a while in our community and it, it helps so many organizations Right. The Community Foundation of West Kentucky uh, is the, the brain behind that and, and the hard workers behind that. Mm -hmm. But it is a huge benefit to at least 15 or more different charities, um, mm -hmm. all different charities from the um, River Discovery Museum to the Market House to PCM. And, and uh, it's just a 5K run, usually takes place in July. And uh, that's another neat community venue that brings people together um, for a common good mm -hmm. you know, and benefits so many people and um, really appreciate the, the foundation, Community Foundation, for doing that. Sure. So, um, it's all about physical fitness here lately. <laughs> it <laughs> does. It seems like a lot of these. Bike rides and 5Ks and, <laughs> and uh, we've got the healthy food and, and uh, transforming our community is what we're doing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Are there any other partnerships that, that are significant to you? Uh, um, I think uh, there are so many that uh, I hate to leave anybody out, mm -hmm. but um, we're just proud that we can pick up the phone and call our friends at Salvation Army or mm -hmm. Family Service Society and say, we've got a situation here and we can do this much. Would you, would you all be able to help a little bit on this? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that collaborative spirit extends into the faith community as well as the different agencies and the businesses and organizations and mm -hmm. uh, the different food drives that folks like Crash Comics or Holland Stivers. And, right. and there are so many that, that say, well, what can we do? Yeah. And I love that. And I, th I think that collaborative relationship is so important. And I think that's one of the things that I appreciate about the ministry that all of our social service organizations in town do is that you do background. You are able to use a database and network and, and find out if someone is going from one organization to another seeking the exact same kind of help so that you're good stewards with all the resources right. that you get. And right, right. We want to make sure we're using the resources in the very best way. And so that means um, teaching accountability, teaching responsibility, and sometimes asking really nosy questions. Sure. Um, but also educating people as to what are we going to do next month? And were you aware that this is a service that you could tap into that would help get you over this hump in addition to what we can do for you today? Exactly, exactly. Well, I'm very grateful, uh, Heidi, for you spending some time with us today and talking about Paducah Cooperative Ministry and all of the wonderful ways that you serve this community and the way you help collaborate and bring people uh, together. As always, if you want to find out more information about PCM, you can call the office. Uh, where are you located? Again. We're located just off of Urban Cobb Drive, uh, 402 Legion Drive, and our phone number is 270-442-6795. We've got a Facebook page. Huh? Uh, we've got a website, um, that's paducahcoopministry.org. Um, we have an email. <laughs> <laughs> there are all kinds of ways there to contact There are, and, and they all work. So <laughs> all work. Um, anybody that has a question, can we help with this, or why don't we do that, please call us, or, you know, um, sure. we want to hear from you. Thank you, Heidi, and we appreciate uh, your time today. Again, go to paducahcoopministry.org if you'd like more information. It's all there, ways you can serve, ways you can volunteer. They even have a donate button at the top of the website. Uh, so that you can help support that ministry. And I know even though the Fresh Start Village uh, is finished up, the, the uh, campaign for that, you always need more support. Well, there's always phase two, you know. So That's right. we, uh, we know, we've gotten started, but we know the job is not yet done. So All right. God doesn't let you put your feet up and rest um, coast. That's right. Thanks for watching Reflections today. I'm Jay Gottman, and I look forward to seeing you again here on Reflections.